Hey there, this is going to be a laid back, real time, draw with me sketching session. We're going to do some simple, fun head sketches to get warmed up at the beginning of the week. And I'll also answer a few of the questions that have been sort of bouncing around the Drawing Codex channel last week. And I'm also going to check out some cool art from around the internet that I found this morning. Let's get started. Alright, welcome to the Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney, I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years, and on this channel we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing, and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Alright, this one is for Monday the 12th of September 2022, and I'm just going to check out ArtStation. This is what the front page is looking like. First thing I saw that looked really cool was this by Kui Feng, uh, who looks like is a concept artist at Blizzard. And yeah, really, really cool um, line and color style sort of image with awesome, awesome rendering. Great dynamic sort of pose. Again, this looks like it would just be a really sort of cool wallpaper or something like that. He can see the, the sort of concept art for the character. And yeah, great range here as well. You know, you can see the these sort of more like sort of cartoony creatures are just drawn with heaps of style and character, which is awesome to see. The next thing I saw was this awesome 3D Archangel um, sort of prototype or proof of concept for a sort of, you know, actual sort of figurine done by uh, Marco Ploff. And uh, yeah, this just looks so awesome. Again, always makes me, you know, want to do more 3D, makes me second guess my sort of simple comic book style, you know, where I sort of, you know, would, would draw something like this a, a lot simpler. Just so cool to see that level of sort of detail and also just, you know, combined with um, you know, just kind of really good shapes, good shape design, good sort of balance, good everything. Yeah, just totally, totally badass. Looks really cool. Again, makes me, I want one. Uh, again, if they sort of make it. Um, yeah, just a really, really good example of um, just good sort of hierarchy of detail in all of the tech good mix of sort of functionality and just kind of, you know, stuff that just looks cool. The next thing I saw was this, which is, again, um, another one of these sort of uh, character design lineups, which is always a really sort of fun thing to see. This one by I uh, Ju, and uh, again, no idea whether that is the proper pronunciation. But uh, yeah, this was cool, really, really good sort of sense of character here. Again, I always like seeing people do these lineups and you know, look at all the things that they do to kind of separate the characters, give them character, you know, but sort of still make it feel as if everything sort of fits within the same world. So, yeah, really, really cool stuff. Um, again, I'll have links to all of these in the description. But yeah, and uh, also awesome to see the, the sort of rough work here, which looks really, really good as well. Um, all the characters there, you know, in these sort of simple sketches and yeah, awesome stuff. Great to see the process as well. Here you can see all that, so well worth kind of checking out. And uh, yeah, just looking at, at, at how people handle these kind of character design challenges. The last thing I saw was this, just quickly by Bo Chen, which is just another really, really great example of splash screen style sort of uh, pinup art. And uh, again, just another good reminder that you can create stuff that looks really, really cool just by using sort of a, a single character that's really well drawn and posed along with some sort of, uh, you know, background elements and, and small things. But again, mostly focusing on a character. And uh, yeah, this one had uh, lots and lots of really great sort of close ups um, that, uh, yeah, give a lot of hints into, you know, how all that sort of detail is created. And I think there's also some really, really good process work there as well, which is cool to see. Um, again, cool to see the pose sort of change halfway through as well. Uh, always good to know the story behind sort of what happened with that. This one seems like it's kind of a fan art, so maybe not um, the sort of professional sort of version of that. Um, you know, again, where someone else is asking for that change. So, yeah, but this one is really, really sort of cool. Um, again, just good pose. People are so friggin' good at doing this these days. There are just so many artists who just are really, really nailing it with, you know, cool pin-up splash screen art. 
um, highly competitive. But again, you know, when people do it, it's it's so, so good and just lots of fun. Anyway, let's jump over to the drawing table and get started sketching. All right, here we are at the drawing table. And for this one, I've got some Fabriano Artistico bright white watercolor paper. Um, I think it's kind of 300 DSM or something. Again, like pr a pretty sort of fancy paper to be sketching around on. Got a two-stage black wing pencil sharpener, kneadable eraser, and some matte black wing pencils. If you'd like to learn more about line and color illustration, you can check out my free quick start guide, which is aimed to get you up and running as quickly as possible, creating line and color style images in Photoshop. The link is in the description. It's free. Go check it out. I often like to just kind of rough things in, right? And, and that kind of allows me to, to think about, yeah, you know, this, there's three of these things, right? It's not, not the end of the world if, if one of them sort of doesn't, doesn't go well. But yeah, I thought I'd talk uh, about a little bit about Visual Library because that's something where it, it can be a, a tricky sort of subject to understand like what Visual Library is. Now, again, the, the idea behind Visual Library is just that, you know, you, you can't draw what you don't know. So it's important to obviously know and, and have, a, have a pretty good understanding of the world and what you're trying to draw in order to draw it properly. The thing is though that, you know, the question is like, how do you, how do you actually build that though? Like how, how do you actually go about getting that? Um, Cause again, it's one thing to say, you know, if you, if you do have a visual library about something, uh, it's, it's sort of one thing to obviously know how to draw something, but you know, if you're not into something, but you need to draw it, how do we handle that? How do we sort of improve our visual library? Now, one of the things that I think is important to know with visual library is that it it's not necessarily about practicing or drilling the drawing of it. It, it's mostly that you understand it on on sort of some level. Now, obviously, there's a caveat to that because the more, like, as you draw something, as you sort of study, you learn about it. Because in order to draw something, we're often paying sort of pretty close attention to it. So the act of drawing will help you study something, but often what you're after with visual library is like a deeper level of understanding. If you think about the concept of a car, for instance, something that I'm sort of, you know, often, often talking about as a, as a great example. Now, if you haven't drawn any cars, often just the, the idea of, you know, drawing any car is a little bit intimidating, right? It's, uh, it's often tricky to know what are the different elements of cars, <laughs> how, do you, how do you draw them, how do you deal with the perspective. But of, often the, the actual problem is a little bit deeper than that. It, it's often that people don't actually know what all the different bits on a car are. And if you don't really understand them, it's very hard to sort of draw it from your imagination or, you know, really have any reasonable expectation that you should be able to, you know, draw that or make up your own cars or, you know, what, whatever, the, whatever the case may be, I think it's really, really important to, yeah, just get those basics down. Now, there's obviously different levels to that, right? Because it's, it's not just about, you know, one car, it's about sort of multiple cars. So a good example of this would be that probably in order to get good at drawing cars, you would need to know all of the different elements and all the different lines that you're going to need to sort of remember about a car. You probably need to remember all of the details that are in there to draw a car from imagination, such as the fact that cars have wiper blades and um, 
you know, sort of mirrors. They have side mirrors. They're, there's there's a huge variety of, of things there that, you know, if you miss them, it's not going to look like a car, right? It, it, it might You might get it to sort of look like a like a kind of cartoon car, right, out of a, you know, like very, very basic kid's show. But, yeah, if, if you're, if you don't really know what, um, what's meant to be there, then it's going to be hard to give it any sense of sort of believability. And that's really what we're sort of talking about when it comes to, to visual library is, is having a, a, a pretty good sense of all of the different bits and pieces that, you know, would make up something like a car. So again, it's knowing you know where all events are likely to be, where the panel um, separation and, and cutouts are going to be for different um, you know sort of elements of the door. And if you get into car design, it's interesting to note that again, like uh, all of those elements of cars actually have names. So you know, to to someone who's not into cars, you you know you might look at car and it's just like yeah yeah that's just a car right or you might say oh there's doors because those are the functional elements that that we know so you know that's obviously useful but every sort of curve of a car in the same way you know like we sort of draw a face every curve of a car has a name right uh, because again industrial designers who are into automotive design talk about these things and, and they label them and again, if you just functionally understand what needs to be there, right, there need to be turn signals, headlights, high beam lights, uh, what else? Again, I'm, I'm not a huge sort of industrial design car nut, but, but I, you know, I, and, and, you know I, I like cars, but I don't really know that much about them. But again, so you, your sort of first task is probably just to see whether you can remember all of the stuff that makes up a car. And that would be, again, things like making sure you put in the wiper blades, making sure that you understand, um, you know, like where the cuts for the door are going to be. If you're drawing the interior right, understanding, you know, that it's going to need uh, some sort of, uh, sort of gear shift. It's going to need some sort of chair, right? It's going to need... Um, controls again depends sort of how old the car is so all of these things are, are, are really sort of ha have their seat in functionality let's say all right so they're they're about functionality and if you want to modify them that's where the functionality comes into place so if you're just trying to memorize how to draw a car uh, let's say it's a pretty sort of standard car being able to memorize exactly where the headlights go on, you know, that particular car uh, is important. And having a record of things that need to be, you know, in existence in order to, you know, draw a good car. Again, like sort of wiper blades, uh, rear view mirror, um, side mirrors, uh, vents, like uh, areas that are, you know, going to take air into the car. You then have, you know, uh, like the exhaust pipes. All of these things, uh, being able to remember where they are is is good for being able to visualize and redraw a car that exists. If you want to modify it, then you need to understand the functionality that goes into that particular car um, or that particular object. So if, if you want to sort of have a believable car that you design, you probably need to understand um you know the functionality between but you know around headlights uh and you know a lot of the airflow right so if you want to redesign where the sort of air goes into the car and make it believable you you sort of need to know how that works so functionality helps from a design perspective and it helps from the perspective of being able to have a list of things that you now know need to be recorded in your mind if you are drawing a car that already exists. So the best way to be sort of explain this is, again, if you're not used to looking at cars and recording what the side mirrors of a car look like or what the, um, again, the, the sort of mesh vent that's going to take air in um, at the front of the car looks like, if you're not used to recording that in your brain, you probably 
haven't paid much attention to what side mirrors look like. And as soon as you kind of say, oh, like these are the elements of a car that need, you know, paying attention to, then you give them a name and you kind of understand, okay, cars need wiper blades, they need side mirrors, they need, you know, um, wheels, and again, that you can understand the proportions and the, the different sort of elements there. All of a sudden you have a name. And once you have a name for things, then you're going to start to record it better in your mind so that there's a certain element to where you know this this could be similar for anatomy right the there's no need to remember the names of muscles or anything like that it's not going to help you draw better um you know it doesn't matter there's plenty of great artists who have no idea what they're drawing from a verbal standpoint but they know where it is they know what it does but giving it a name might help you sort of place it in your mind let's say and that is that is the value of that from a visual library representation because you then start to notice it right once you sort of name things once it becomes familiar you're more likely to see it out there in the world and and record the differences and the the little elements that actually sort of make it up and make it interesting so again the technique for visual library depends um, it could just be that you sort of get interested in it and you start to, to learn about it and, and actually look at it. And I, I think, you know, there's certainly something to be said for, you know, just that basic level of, of understanding. Now, the trick is that, you know, if, if I sort of ask a room full of, uh, you know, aspiring artists, you know, what their interests are. Some are going to be interested in cars, some are going to be interested in cats, some are going to be interested in horses, some are, they, everyone has quite specific knowledge that may, maybe, again, you, you will have something that you understand about the world that, that maybe other people don't. That doesn't mean that you are just going to naturally be able to go and draw it well, though. So it's a mix of having the ability to draw and having the visual library, but also then having sort of put it together a few times and and sort of worked out the kinks so again if you're trying to draw cars you you really need to practice as well as just sort of say hey you know n now i know that cars have side mirrors and you know you need to sort of uh, you know figure out how big they are what shape they are what pattern they are etc etc that's step one step two is learn how to draw step three is sort of connect those things together and you know start to experiment and see you know again how accurately can you replicate those um, objects um, by drawing so the the answer to to a lot of these things is that again it, it's it's a complicated process right it's it's not like one thing where you're just going to be able to you know get photos and copy photos because it's not about photography right the, the 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 photograph will help you to draw the specific thing that you're drawing now but if you want to draw stuff from your imagination and you're building that visual library then again like the the most important thing is that you understand it and copying it from a photo may or may not actually help you in that in that instance right it, it might be something that helps you it might not so you have to be very aware of how you actually get this um, information into your head and, and how you sort of record it. And uh, certainly just being a fan of something isn't going to help you to, to draw it. It will mostly help you have capacity to kind of look at it for a long time and, you know, really you know, be interested in it enough to, to support you're staring at it and learning about all the different sort of aspects of it enough that's where sort of your passion will will help you in terms of visual library it's not that you know your knowledge of it is uh, is going to be that much better um and again there's there's a difference between understanding you know the basics right to the point where again you can draw a car you can maybe draw the difference between a sports car, a four-wheel drive, like an SUV, a sedan, a wagon, right? And you understand the basic proportional differences. But then there's uh, 
obviously the level where you know you you might want to play around with you know being able to represent specific design languages um, you know from different car manufacturers or again to sort of design your own and understand how to make things look old how to make things look new so the other layer is linked to that which is that it's not always just about details but often it's about iconography and specific elements that will tend to convince people that they're looking at like uh, if we again go back to cars you could say well there's probably things that you can do to make your generic sort of car that you're drawing look like it is a car from the 50s right or it's a car from the 50s from america and there's also probably things that you could do to you know make your car look like it's uh you know it's an old mustang for instance uh, again to take like an american um, car as an example or you could probably do some things to make it look and feel like the car you're drawing is like a, a Porsche right like a vintage Porsche and those things don't necessarily have to do with the you know details or the modic model specific details now car people will know that you know particular cars and particular models have little sort of details but most people are looking for that sort of general design sense right they're looking for that you know like oh yeah that looks like this and and that is rare where we have the concept of sort of iconography or basic design language and you know you you can really do a lot of work in that instance by just making sure that you stick to those those basic tenets right if you if you don't know exactly every single grill every single radiator um, marking if you don't know all of those things you, you can still do a huge huge amount for you know your sort of general drawing by just getting the iconography of sort of vintage cars versus sort of modern cars down what are the general differences that they tend to have what are the shapes that they tend to um, you know support etc etc and it, it's often again a mix of these things that allows you to sort of just sort of make stuff up and, and draw in a convincing way so again while you probably won't like while the spe specific and the specificity that you go to uh, in your visual library research can be really useful because it, it sort of forces you to really think Often the thing that's going to be like your, your sort of 80-20 analysis or uh, you, the thing that's going to make the most difference is most likely just going to be you paying close attention to the iconography, the overall shapes, right? What are the primary shapes that tend to dominate, again, like a vintage uh, Ford Mustang automobile? what are the general characteristics and shapes what is the iconography of a vintage porsche uh, 911 or again the cars that uh, came before a 911 and it, it's a mix of all these things so part of what you're paying attention to is the generalities of a thing so a car i it normally has x number of doors it has four wheels it needs wiper blades side mirrors intake vents it needs uh, headlights turn signals etc if you put those all in then what you'll tend to find is like hey it looks like a car <laughs> um and obviously again if you're really into this then you can build your visual library up to a point where you could maybe draw again every sort of different uh, permutation of uh, a Porsche 911 or a Ford Mustang but most of the time what you'll actually be doing is being able to make any sort of some car that you draw sort of without reference look vaguely like a Porsche vaguely like a Mustang and what that means is that when you do then add reference it'll be a lot easier so it's not just that um, you know you, you're never going to draw with reference but it means that if you bring a specific car up as reference or photographic reference then what you're doing is you're looking for 
what do the, what do the side mirrors look like on that specific car? How are they different from, you know, the standard one that I would draw to make a car look like, again, like a vintage sports car or a minivan? Um, how are those things different? And you'll be able to extract from that reference very easily all of the different bits and pieces that are going to, you know, easily go and, you know, help you out, right? Like help you with that specific task. So again, that's really where these, the idea of sort of visual library and, and, and building visual library will, will come into play. Um, and again, it, it's one of these things where it's, uh, it's hard to give yourself a, like a, a, a basic, you know, sort of exercise that's always going to work because it, it's not something that you can necessarily grind through. You need to build a framework within your mind for where these sort of elements are going to live. And you need to sort of be interested and you need to be able to practice that and put it into some sort of actual practical application. There's, there's no point in, um, you know, sort of saying, okay, I need to learn how to draw, you know, all these all these different things right um you know like cars this that you know you you need to and, and then to just sort of try and you know blitz out all of the visual library because you'll probably forget it right because you haven't put it into practice you you haven't tried to use it in the method or the specific application that you need for instance, you know, you might, again, grab a pencil and try and draw a car or, you know, you might be drawing cars, you know, quite big and you, that's your, that's the sort of way that you're gathering your visual library by, you know, drawing these sort of big cars. But what you find is that, you know, when you're actually, you know, drawing your cars for what you want to do, again, it might be a comic book, right? Actually, what you have is, you know, like a little, maybe like a little row of cars here, <laughs> right? Or, uh, you know, you're going to have a character here and a car in the background. And in that case, what you realize is that the most important thing for your particular application there are those larger shapes, right? It is going to be you really, really digging deep and, and sort of looking at like, okay, none of these details are going to matter at all. But for sure, some of, uh, you know, these things that I do are going to make it very clear that this is a car. I'm very clear that, uh, you know, it's a particular type of car. And so, yeah, a big part of your job is to, you know, pay attention to how the reference and the visual library that you're building relates specifically to what you're doing. Because, again, not everyone is going to be able to draw everything every time. And if you're building essentially like a, you know, you're building your own neural net inside your brain and... It needs to have some sense of application about what information do I store and what information do I let go. And uh, I think that's really important because our brains are actually, you know, sort of primed to forget most of the nonsense that we see. So you kind of have to train it to look for stuff, right? That's the, that's the key, like train your brain to look for the right thing, record the right thing. And Again, depending on application, you might find that, you know, your style is actually going to force you and push you towards looking heavily at a particular thing, right? Um, so, you know, if you optimize your visual library acquisition for the specific task, you'll find, again, you're going to build a much more effective system for actually being able to do what you want, right? Um, again, apologies if this is all a little bit sort of abstract, but that's the best way I can sort of give you a, a good answer, right? Something that, you know, actually kind of makes sense. I, I, I feel like a lot of the other stuff is kind of abstract. Uh, and, and again, I, all I would say is, yeah, try and avoid, and this is my, my general advice, you know, in general is try and avoid doing really abstract exercises. And by that, I mean, again, not drawing something that's fun, but kind of saying like, hey, I should, you know, learn to draw cars. So, um, you know, let's just grind out, you know, 100 hours of me just sort of drawing cars. That probably won't work, again, for those reasons that I've kind of specified there, right? Um, again, you, I, I think you're going to find that typically that's going to yeah, lead to you just kind of doing a bunch of drawings and doing a bunch of stuff. But yeah, it's not actually going to end up with you 
then being able to sort of apply that to what you want. And the reason for that is, look, maybe it would in the long run, you know, eventually, yeah, you know, if you give yourself infinite amounts of time, you could learn to draw everything. But in most cases, we're not actually drawing everything. We're drawing a few things. Um, and we're, again, we're, we're having that sort of specific application. And that's where if you're sort of sitting there saying like, but I want results now, Again, the way you get results now is to you know, practice what you want to do and try and build a library for that because you will actually see your ability to apply your visual library in that instance improve a lot faster. If you, you know, uh, you know as, as opposed to that, if, if you sort of take the approach of, yeah, I just need to build visual library and sort of learn to draw everything, um, I think you're much more likely to get frustrated and uh, again, not have any um, sort of real need for it. Again, because some comic books, again, just using things that um, so we've, we've sort of been talking about and we're comfortable about, some comic books are going to require you to draw um, a lot of cards. You know, if you look at sort of initial D as an example, right? And again, this is a good sort of example of the mental map you would sort of need to think about with this stuff. Some cars, some comics, right, are going to require you to, you know, draw a lot of cars really, right? Again, this is my sort of basic sketch of a car, right? They, they're going to be like really big on the page, right? The, the, the characters are going to be, you know, sort of standing around them and, and they're the star of the show. And that is going to be based on, again, specifically you and what your career is going to require. Other people are going to be more likely to kind of say, oh, yeah, again, I, you know, I have a whole bunch of characters talking. I have, you know, heavy sort of character style. You know, my stories tend to be about people talking. But, you know, I want to sort of just make sure, hey, you know, there's a bunch of cars behind them in the background. So... Both people need to draw cards, but the importance of that particular visual library in your work, the effect, right, the, the, the power that you're able to put to the ground sooner is going to be sort of different um, based on what you actually need to learn to execute and make that particular shot better. So if you're starting and, you know, again, you're just drawing background cards, then uh, you know, like uh, you, you need to kind of know that, again, don't forget to put windscreen wipers on your car, right? Don't forget to put lights on your car. You know, uh, remember, you know, the, the basic proportions, right? You know, like what what are the proportions of the car, right? You know, is it like this? Is it like that? You know, if you get the basic stuff done, you'll find that, uh, you know, it, it'll kind of like you have a bunch of stuff in the background, right? It's going to look like a car. Um, pretty cool. Uh, but again, that, that level of knowledge is not going to be enough if you're you know, doing a story that revolves around technology or cars or anything like that. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and, and again, it very much speaks to the idea that uh, not everyone learns to draw everything, you know, and that's fine. You don't need to learn to draw everything, and especially in the beginning, you don't need to learn to draw everything. You need to, you know, keep it keep it pretty uh, efficient, right? Because eventually, again, you know, you get it to the point where, um, you know, those cars in the background get really good, you know, and, and they're, they're, they're very specific and, you know, you, you, you have, you're very comfortable sort of, you know, maybe saying, oh, okay, you know, I have a pretty good idea how to draw a car. I know all the side mirrors. I know all the bits that go into a car. And maybe you just create a, a little reference sheet of, you know, like a hundred cars, right? And it's just, you know, showing you different proportions and different details. And then you can just kind of, you know, sort of check your reference and be like, oh, let's draw a car, right? That's kind of bigger. And you, you, you can sort of look at it and you can make them all different and interesting, add some variety, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, and do a really good job of this eventually, right? You know, once you're really comfortable with it. In the beginning, often what you're trying to do is, again, you know, just sort of avoid it looking like a marshmallow or, or something, right? Just, you know, avoiding your car not looking or feeling like a car, which, uh, you know, is, again, you know, that's the sort of situation I would, I would be in, you know, very early on in my career is, you know, someone would say, hey, you know, draw a car and for me I, I didn't drive for a long time just again to sort of give some personal 
color to these examples. And so to me, cars were just cars, right? It's like cars, as far as the eye could see, there was no difference between any car in my world. Um, you know, if, if you if you got me to sort of, you know, name any car or do anything, I, I just had absolutely no interest and no idea. Um, it, it just wasn't part of my visual anything. Uh, and, and, and again, it's uh, a lot of this stuff is quite specific. Um, and, and so when I went to draw cars for my art, I, you know, I just had, I really struggled, right? I had no idea. And I would literally get, you know, comments like people saying, uh, yeah, that, that, that car is terrible, right? It just looks like a marshmallow, right? It's just, just completely non-specific. Um, yeah, very, very embarrassing. Uh, but when I did start to drive, I, you know, started noticing cars and, you know, then I was like, oh, there's all these different things and it became interesting and I started looking at it. Um, and yeah, I'm still not someone who's good at drawing cars or, you know, particularly enjoys drawing cars, but, um, I understand enough to kind of know what I don't know, let's say, All right? So I, I sort of know how to, uh, get myself out of trouble and, uh, you know, everything, everything is basically like that. So part of your job as an artist is to, you know, maybe sort of figure out what task you're trying to achieve, um, Oh, that is a little bit high. Yeah. So, you know, what are you, what are you trying to do? What, what do you sort of need? Um, what, what are the things in there? And, and a good way to do this is, you know, look at artists you admire and, you know, look at all the stuff they're drawing. Look at the projects you want to either draw or be a part of and look at the general sort of things that, you know, uh, artists and, you know, people who are already doing that need to do to, right, to do a, do a good job at that. And, uh, you know, just maybe make a list, you know, again, for me, I always wanted to draw fantasy art. Uh, so again, you need to know how to draw sort of trees, right? Natural environment, um, you know, maybe like horses, castles, uh, you, you need to sort of understand a little bit about how medieval life, which is often where, you know, most, uh, European based, uh, sort of fantasy you know, sort of takes place. If you think about sort of Game of Thrones, right? That's typically what we're sort of talking about. Um, you know, like how did life work there and what are the things you need to, to draw that are specific to that, you know, sort of like wooden carts, horses, etc., etc. different types of clothing. So yeah, you know, just uh, make a list and sort of see how that goes. And again, the reason I say that is because, you know, if, if you're not able to actually apply the concept of visual library to your work, then I, I think you're going to have a hard time sort of, you know, trying to build this muscle, let's say. So there's, there's the concept and the idea of sort of how do you acquire information about the world. And if you learn how to do this and you learn how to, you know, perfect your ability to look for reference. What type of reference do you need? Do you want photographic reference? Do you need real reference? Do you work better going out and actually looking at things, right? Like how do you work? How, what, what's fun for you? If you really sort of figure that out and get that right, then I think you'll find that much of this sort of other stuff becomes a little bit easier. And also then when you go to learn things that you're not good at, right? So, you know, things you don't have a natural interest in, it's, it's just a lot easier because you've already built that muscle for acquiring visual information with things that you are really passionate about or are very, very important to you at a particular time. Um, I, you know, like you just need them for a particular project and yeah, you know, so you, you've kind of, you've already trodden that path and, and once you sort of get used to the, the processes it's a lot easier to sort of replicate them, right? Again, even if you're sort of dealing with bits and pieces that are, you know, not quite as, you know, don't don't quite sort of get you up in the morning, let's say. Um, so yeah, let me know if um, you know, if if that sort of uh, talk is is sort of helpful. Uh, again, I, I I feel like I I'd like to sort of do more sort of question answering in these sort of casual frameworks because I feel like I'm not normally like I, I tend to take the, the the longer sort of more nuanced uh long form approach to it right which uh, doesn't always work for you know making 
really sort of tight YouTube videos that people are gonna um, that are gonna work from a clickbait sort of standpoint. So um, let me know if that is kind of helpful. Um, how your sort of visual library development is going. Whether you've got any other sort of questions that uh, are sort of helpful. But uh, yeah, and again, keep sketching, keep doing these things. I think you know, building your building your sketching ritual is super important for this. You you could certainly make um, you know the the idea of sort of visual library um, part of your sort of sketching ritual. Again, once you've got the sketching ritual there, you know, once you're doing this day in day out, um, you're comfortable. Uh, you're not lacking motivation for for sort of the the sitting down side of it. That's when, again, you know, giving yourself some little exercises might help for a, a little bit, you know, each day. But uh, yeah, in general, I, I sort of approach this from a project specific standpoint, right? What do you need to create the awesome art that you um, have always wanted? And what's holding you back? Again, uh, is it trees? You know, every time you go to draw trees in your cool fantasy painting, um, you know, uh, it's just not working. Uh, that might motivate you to, you know, go and learn about trees, how they, how they, how they grow, um, you know, what the the iconography of them is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And again, just understand these things are, a, you know, this is a lifelong pursuit, expanding your visual library. Uh, there's no real, again, speed way to do it. Um, there's speed way to sort of gain some, you know, like pretty quick, uh, you know, sort of results, but honestly, they won't last. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you, cause you know, I, I've, again, I've done a lot of projects where I'm like, oh yeah, I learned how to draw this and this and this. And, um, you know, it, it's really only the things that, you know, I spent a lot of time drawing like sort of pirates and those kind of things that, you know, really lasted, you know, I, I've, I've learned how to draw a whole bunch of stuff cause I needed to for a job, but, uh, yeah, you know, it, uh, it just kind of disappears. It's not something I can have sort of easy recall for. And, uh, yeah, there's no point in sort of you know, if you don't need to build the visual library to, you know, just kind of do it uh, for fun, right? Or to ha or to sort of say like, hey, I've got a whole bunch of pages of like visual library sketches. It's like, uh, who freaking cares, right? No one cares about that at all. No one will ever care about that at all, unless it's making it to your work. It it just doesn't matter as far as as far as I'm concerned. I mean, let let me know if you guys sort of feel differently. And the other thing that I'll sort of add, just lastly, because again, we're pretty much sort of done with this warm-up sketching uh, for today is like you it's not always just about drawing it as I said uh, one of the things that helped me out the most when I was drawing my pirate book is I got a hold of some actual flintlock pistols right so flintlock pistols are the right the right the sort of the pirate pistol right that kind of looks like again here's my visual library uh, sort of failing me right they got the little sort of flintlock pistol thing right they're those pistols that look like that from the ye olden days and i actually got one so that i could kind of hold it right i just managed to i knew someone who knew someone got some real ones and just holding it and being able to hold it and sort of be like this is what it would be like to be a pirate i'd be holding this thing and this is how it sort of feels just that allowed me to draw flintlock pistols and people holding them in different positions so much easier because I could kind of visualize and, and think about it. And it may be the same for you. Uh, again, it doesn't really matter how you do these things or, you know, like uh, there's no right or wrong way. There's only, again, application. Can you put the power down? Can you make it come out the other side and, you know, have some, have some good results? So hopefully that's been you know some sort of food for thought got some quick uh again generic sort of head sketches and you know playing around again this is often what i'm doing when i'm not thinking if just sort of put a pencil in my hand draw some fun stuff like this let me know if you got any thoughts in the comments but uh yeah i think that's it for this one we'll catch you in the next video and happy drawing